We don't really know why uh, some patients survive Ebola and some die of it, but we know that there's a battle essentially between the virus and the body's immune response, and sometimes the body's immune response wins. And so people who mount a strong immune response and defeat the virus, they the, tend to be the ones that survive. And they have antibodies in their, their blood after they've recovered from the infection. So the idea is that if you can actually boost uh, the response of patients who have the disease with antibodies from patients who've recovered, that may help the survival of patients who are, are suffering from Ebola. It's been used a little bit before, we've never had an epidemic like this before with respect to Ebola, so it's not been used on a, a lot of Ebola patients, but it has been used for some other infections. There's a one experience with Ebola in a previous small, smaller epidemic of Ebola where eight patients were treated with convalescent blood, that's the blood from patients who had survived Ebola, and of those eight patients, seven survived. Now, that sounds very good and was very good, but the problem with they had lots of other interventions as well, and it's difficult to know whether it was actually the convalescent blood that was responsible for their survival or whether it was the other interventions, uh, supportive care that was responsible. So that's really why we're, we want to do this study, to really try and see if it, it does improve survival. There is doubt about whether it's going to work. Um, uh, and although WHO have recommended this, it's not a straightforward procedure. And there are two basic things one can do. One can either use the, the blood of, of convalescent patients, patients who have recovered from Ebola, and transfuse that into affected patients. Um, that's quite complicated to organize. Um, it takes a long time to transfuse the blood. Um, a better procedure is just to try and extract the plasma, that's the fraction of blood that contains the antibodies from the survivors Ebola patients, and um, uh, use that as therapy in patients. The problem with that is it's quite a complicated procedure uh, to extract that plasma. Um, but now uh, devices, small machines have been uh, developed which it seems, can be taken to the field, and rather being confined to large centers, they can actually be used quite close to where patients are being treated. There are risks, there are risks with any intervention. Uh, everything is done to minimize those risks. Uh, if you take somebody's blood or plasma, there's the possibility that they have other violent infections that might be transmitted through that. There are quite stringent procedures in place to try and minimize those risks. Uh, patients are screened for hepatitis B, for HIV infection, hepatitis C, and some of the procedures that actually are used in the extraction of the plasma uh, do kill viruses. So the, the risks are, are not zero, but they're small. First of all, you have to persuade survivors that they should donate plasma. This in, involves essentially hooking themselves up to a machine, having blood pass through the machine, the, the plasma, the antibodies are taken out, and the other blood, blood components go back into the individual. So you have to persuade sufficient numbers of individuals that um, uh, they wish to volunteer in this way. Uh, initial indications where we're doing this study in, in Guinea is that survivors of Ebola are indeed prepared to, to volunteer in this way. So we're quite hopeful that there will be a, a good supply of volunteers. There then has to be matching of the plasma donation to the individual patients. Not all patients can have all plasma. Um, and then the plasma has to be transfused into the patients into the uh, difficult treatment conditions that, that uh, uh, are present for the treatment of Ebola. So it's, it's not a straightforward procedure. So it is important uh, to do this trial to see if it works, because if it doesn't work, then a lot of time and effort will be saved in, in not really using this in the future if we can find no evidence that it improves improve survival. How, how we will be actually testing the therapy is evolving, um, and it's depended to some extent on the supply of material of either convalescent blood or convalescent plasma. We had anticipated initially that it would some, take some time to set up these mobile uh, plasma uh, extraction procedures, and so we were going to start the trial using convalescent blood. Um, and that's quite a complicated procedure to transfuse. We envisaged we wouldn't be able to transfuse very many patients, initially at least, and so we could compare the survival of those who were transfused with those who were not transfused. Um, 
More recently, it's become apparent that plasma is likely to become more available more quickly. And so we may, as it were, bypass the uh, convalescent blood stage and go straight to the plasma. And that may be available in greater supply so we can give plasma to uh, more patients. But it there probably won't be enough to treat all patients. And so we will have some patients who are treated and some who are not. And we will compare the survival of those two groups. Um, Ideally, what one would like to do in these circumstances is, as it were, to randomise that some patients receive the plasma and some patients don't. But the practicalities of doing this in the, in the circumstances in which treatment is being administered are such that our belief is that's probably not going to be possible.